you through the multiple choice questions for AS level accounting, specifically for inventory valuation. The questions are taken from a number of Cambridge papers, as shown. The first one we'll look at is Cambridge June 2015 Paper 11, Question 8. A business had the inventory receipts as shown. On the 1st of April, there were 2,000 litres of some liquid, obviously, at $4 per litre. And then the 2nd of April, they received 1,000 litres at $5.50 per litre. There was no opening inventory, so you don't need to take anything into account from before that. On the 3rd of April, 2,500 litres were issued to production. So in other words, we had a total of 3,000 litres coming in and 2,500 litres coming out. However, we now need to decide how to value this um, liquid that was issued to production. If we are using FIFO, we need to remember that FIFO means whatever came in first is the first that will go out. So the oldest inventory is used first. So when we're doing this calculation, we're going to work from the top down. There was no opening inventory, so we will start with the 1st of April and use all of those 2,000 litres to get the first part of my calculation. So all of those 2,000 at $4 means that there will have been a cost of $8,000 associated. However, there's a total of 2,500, not just 2,000. So that remaining 500 liters we need to now get from the 2nd of April. Even though we bought a full 1,000 liters here, there's obviously a 500 liters that are left over and the other half 500 liters were issued. So that is why we are only going to take 500 liters issued at $5.50 to get 2750. And we can now add those two figures together. 8,000 from the 1st of April's inventory and 2750 from the 2nd of April's inventory to get a total value of inventory used of 10750. If you look at the options available, you can see it's option C that you need to choose. Let's have a look now at paper 1 2, question 16. A business bought and sold the following items of inventory. Over here, you are given the months, January, February, March. Uh, in January, there were 30 units purchased at $2 each. In February, 20 units purchased at $2.50. And in March, 10 units were sold. It uses the AVCO method of inventory valuation. This is the other very commonly used method um, if you choose not to use FIFO. And AVCO simply means that you're using the weighted average. In other words, you're going to calculate the average value of inventory um, that is on hand. And you will need to recalculate this every single time that new stock is bought. Basically, what you will always do is take the cost per unit to calculate it. You'll use the total cost or the total invoiced amount divided by the total quantity that you have. So um, if you have a look over here, you can see your January $60 um, is plus your February $50. Um, you can work that out just by saying 30 times 2 gives you 60 and then 20 times $2.50 is what gives you your $50, gives you a total value of $110. Your total quantity is then the 30 from January and the 20 from February, which gives you a total of 50 units. So the total value of stock is 110, the total quantity is 50, and therefore the average value must be $2.20. You now want to have a look at the sales. The sales would obviously be at the selling price, but the cost of those sales would be at this average of $2.20 each. Um, so your inventory on hand will then be your 40 units at this $2.20, in other words, $88. Notice that when you sell these units, you will sell them at $2.20, and whatever is left over will also be at $2.20. Although the value changes when you buy stock, it doesn't change when you sell stock. 
So our inventory on hand will be $88. If you have a look at the values that are given to you, you can see that you will choose C as the value of your inventory at the end of March. Let's have a look now at Cambridge, November 2015, paper 1-1. One, one. On the 1st of January, a business had an inventory of 100 units at a cost of $10 each. So this here is your opening stock. Your opening stock would be valued at $1,000. The following transactions then took place. In February, you sold 50 units, so you would only have 50 units of $10 each left over. In March, you bought $60, 60 units at $11 each. In April, you bought 70 units at $12 each and you sold 100 units. And in May, you sold 30 units. All sales are made at $13 per unit. And the business values inventory on a FIFO basis. The question is, what is the value of inventory at the end of May? If you are looking at the value of inventory, it means you can ignore your sales. The selling price is completely irrelevant. You are only looking at the cost. So, um, and you're looking at the value at the end of May. So in other words, FIFO says that whatever you had first would have been sold first, and you're looking for your end value, the value at this point. So what it means is you need to then go up and say the value of stock at the end would come first from your April purchases, then from your March purchases, and if you hadn't sold very much, then you would take from your opening stock, which is more unlikely. So what we need to do first is we need to work out how much we had on hand at the end of May. So we'll take the 100 units that we had at the beginning, that's why I've put that over there, minus the 50 units that are sold in February, plus 60 units and 70 units that were bought, minus the 100 units that were sold, and then minus the 30 units sold in May. This leaves me with 50 units at the end of this time period. Now, given the fact that I want to go from the bottom up to find my closing inventory, I'm actually going to take all 50 from those 70 because there's only 50 left over. So I'm going to value all 50 of those items at $12 each. So that's why I'm going to use my April cost and I'm going to get $600 as the value of inventory at the end. In other words, C as my answer. Yes, so far it seems that all the answers are C, but that's not always the case. So please don't just assume that your next answer will be C. Looking now at the Cambridge Specimen Paper 1, question 23. A company commences business on the 1st of April. So there's no opening stock because they're starting the business. It buys the following units of inventory. On the 1st of April, it bought 200 at $250 each. On the 1st of September, 400 at $200. And the 1st of December, 200 at $300. So you can see the price is actually fluctuating quite a lot. It then tells you that it sells 500 units at $550 each. What is the gross profit for the year using the FIFO method of inventory valuation? Given that you are using FIFO, um, gross profit means we want to say sales minus cost of sales and the cost of sales we will calculate from the beginning because the beginning items would have been sold first. So to calculate my cost of sales for this period, I will use all 200 that were bought on the 1st of April because we must have sold those if we sold 500. So I will start with 200 plus 250 at $250 from April, which is a value of $50,000. If I sold a total of 500 units, that means that I still need to take into account another 300 units cost and I worked that out by saying the 500 that are sold minus the 200 that I've already accounted for to give me 300 more that were sold and I will need to take this from the next set of purchases in other words September at $200 and so for the September purchases value I get $60,000 so the total value of my cost of sales must be 50 plus 60,000 which is 110,000. 
But now remember that the question is asking what is the gross profit. So I still need to go and work out my sales. My sales would be that full 500 units at $550 each selling price. So my total sales is $275,000. To calculate gross profit, I simply then subtract the cost of sales from the sales and I get a gross profit of 165000 If you look at all the options here, you can see that this time it was D. Isn't it lucky we didn't just choose C? So, so D is the option that you would choose for that question. Cambridge, June 2016, paper 11. Question 1. Inventories are valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value in the statement of financial position. Which accounting concept is being applied? Well, let's have a look at each of these in turn. A, duality. Duality means your double entry system. In other words, for every debit, there is a credit. This is not what we are referring to here. So I don't like that. Let's move on. B, historic cost means the transactions are recorded at what they cost rather than what they might be worth. Now, net realizable value is not the cost of the item. So, um, therefore, historic cost doesn't really come into it. Matching refers to linking your incomes and expenses for a period, and that also does not apply. Prudence means that you are going to value your items conservatively. So, this is going to be the most suitable answer. However, please do keep in mind that Actually, fair presentation as set out by IFRS or the International Financial Reporting Standards that are used internationally is actually an overriding principle that you would use instead of prudence if necessary. So if they give fair presentation as an option, choose that. But otherwise, in this case, prudence is the best option available. And so you would choose D. Question 12. The table shows information relating to closing inventory. The cost, net realizable, sorry, realizable value, costs of realization, and the replacement cost are all shown here. The question then asks, what is the value of closing inventory? Now remember that you always want to value your inventory at the lower of cost or net realizable value. So the cost is 50000 the net realizable value would be realizable value less the costs of realization. In other words, the net effect of these two figures here, which is 40,000. If you then compare the 50 to the 40, obviously 40,000 is the value that is the lower, and that is what you would want to use. Replacement cost of 35,000 is not actually relevant here. The fact that you could replace it at a lower price, well, too bad. If you are able to get 40,000, that is the value that you are going to use. And therefore, you would choose B as your answer. Cambridge, March 2016, paper 1 2, question 22. A company provided the following information. You are given your opening inventory of 100 units at $2 each, receipt of new inventory 400 units at $2.10, and 200 units that were then issued to production. The company uses FIFO to value inventory. In other words, to work out your cost of sales, you would work from the top down or the beginning towards the end. If you're looking at your closing inventory, you would use the ending upwards like that. We are asked, what is the cost of material issued to production? In other words, these 200 units that are over here, how would you value those? So given the fact we want the amount that is issued or the costs that are used, you're going to go from the beginning to the end. So we will start with these 100 units at $2 each, which is $200. And then we need to use the other 100 from this new inventory that was bought. Now, although there was 400 bought, we only need to take into account an additional 100 units because 200 units were used. I've already taken into account 100 here, so I only need another 100 at $2.10. And that's why I'm going to show my calculation here as $210. I can then add the opening value plus the new value to get $410, which is going to be answer B. Cambridge, June 2016, paper 1-2, question 23. 
A business was started on the 1st of January. The purchases and sales for inventory for January were as follows. Here again, you can see we bought some stock on the 4th of January. We then sold some stock. We bought some stock. We sold some stock. Are you starting to see some patterns of how to use this? The business uses FIFO. The question asks what the gross profit was. This is very similar to one of the other questions. You, for gross profit, obviously, you want to work out what your total sales is. In other words, you're going to use all of these sales here. Your selling price remained constant at $400, and you sold a total of four items at $400. So your total selling price will be $1,600. You then need to work out your cost of sales so that you can calculate gross profit. The cost of sales would be first in, first out. So all three of these must have been sold because four was sold. So you'll use all three of those at $200. And then the remaining one, because remember you needed to show four sold. You've used three from here. The other one would come from $250. So what's going to happen is we are going to then have one unit from the 26th of January purchases at $250. So your total will be $850. That's $600 plus the $250 to get $850 as the cost. You can then calculate your selling price minus your cost price and get a gross profit of $780.